this lesson is about product design and development. It is important that businesses are looking forward. Although their core product may be popular with customers at the moment, this may not always be the case. Businesses must constantly upgrade their design and products. Let's have a look at the example of Carmen Muesli, which you may be aware of. Carmen Muesli came out with the original product, which was Muesli. It became very popular. They then diversified that product to provide lots of different flavours of Muesli. That was then popular. They then looked forward and thought, what else can we do with this product range? They started to make Muesli bars. That became very popular. They then started to interview their customers and customers started to talk to them about things like gluten-free, sugar-free products. And so they're now looking to provide gluten-free and sugar-free um, muesli bars and muesli. During the product design and development steps, the following needs to be considered. Quality, supply chain management, capacity management, and cost. Now this is the product design and development steps. First of all, we do market research. We find out what people want or what people think about certain products. We then design and prototype development. This means that we design a product, we come up with a prototype that we can actually show a consumer. Now using com computer-aided design, CAD technology, we can actually show this on a computer screen without making a prototype sometimes. We then test our prototype particularly with things that um, have mechanical devices like vacuum cleaners and dishwashers and cars, we actually need to test the prototype to make sure it works effectively. We then refine our product in this stage and then we launch our product to the consumers. At all phases, we need to be aware of the highest quality possible, our supply chain management, how much is, are the resources costing us and how are we able to reduce the cost, the capacity management, how many can we make, and obviously the cost of the entire operations process. Now product utility, this refers to the usefulness and value that a product has according to the consumer. If you look at our, our diagram here, we need to always be thinking in the back of our mind when we're at meetings and we're talking to staff, what does the consumer think? What does our feedback reveal? The consumer's perception of a product is very important at all stages. For example, a consumer might have a perception that our product is low quality or they might have a perception that our product is high quality and we need to decide are we happy with that perception or do we need to make changes to change that perception? Service design and development. Services are very different from goods. We know that services are intangible. How? They are intangible and production and consumption occurs at the same time. Now why is that a complication? Well. When consumers can see what we're doing, we need to be very, very careful because the customer service needs to be perfect. When designing new or improved services, the following needs to be considered. Explicit service and implicit service. Now, when I go to the doctor, there's going to be explicit service. I expect that my doctor has the qualification and the skills to deal with whatever medical problem that I am encountering. However, I'm also expecting implicit service. I'm expecting that they are going to show a care and a kindness to me and that when I walk out of that doctor's surgery, I will feel good about what has happened. Also, you need to be asking yourself, will goods be required? So while a doctor's surgery does provide a service, quite often they will need goods as part of that. Doctors need equipment to be able to care for patients. 
And I need to think about the cost of that. Services using goods. So sometimes services require goods. For example, a doctor is a service, however, doctors need bandages. Cooks need food. And teachers need stationery such as pens and paper. Often new technology can improve the service provided. For example, we have now in America the robotic doctor. Sometimes patients come to hospitals and they may have a rare ailment or disease. And the doctors on shift may not have the necessary skills and expertise to treat that patient adequately. A robotic doctor can access any doctor around the world that may have the necessary expertise for that particular patient. So that piece of technology is improving the service of caring for patients around the world. So that lesson was on task design and development. Thank you.